Welcome back, another episode. Now that Miranda Bailey is leading the residency program again, everything is good. I will truly miss Nick Marsh, wasn't he a fantastic character on Grey's Anatomy? I hope we get to see him when we visit Boston, but there's something about Bailey leading this tiny surgical ship that makes me happy on the inside. Naturally, there is no sweetness or light in the way Bailey runs Grey Sloan Memorial. She puts new procedures in place for our interns right away until they finish their comprehensive procedure record, which consists of basic medical procedures to make sure they have a solid basis before cutting into corpses. None of them will be permitted to enter an operating room. It's an attempt to divert these kids off their current path toward becoming surgical cowboys and is akin to a game of surgical bingo. Bailey speaks from experience when she believes that interns need discipline and constraints to realize their full potential, because she has raised a number of extremely talented surgeons. Naturally, there is some opposition, mostly from the interns, who are, as is customary, a bunch of whining little bitches when they feel like it. Before her first formal day as residency director, Ben warns his wife that kids today are different, they don't back down. I feel a thousand years old because I am nodding my head in accordance with this statement. Bailey continues to march. She is not tampering with the log of procedures. The interns view the journal as a tool to help them become better surgeons, but because of how serious the whole thing is, they become overly focused on finishing it, treating it like a hurdle they must overcome to return to the operating room. When Bailey, Winston, Quan, and Lucas deal with a twenty-something man named John Doe, a fisherman who was recently paid and then robbed, he walks in with an abdomen full of bullets and sweatpants lined with thousands of dollars, giving Bailey a front row seat to the highs and lows of her new system. All Quan and Lucas can do while John Doe is in critical condition is act like a couple of ding-dongs, bickering over who gets to do what. Not just the interns find Bailey's new system offensive. Winston expresses his concerns about it as well while in the oar, he tells Bailey that operating on patients helps surgeons learn, this is stunting their education. Normally, I would respond, how dare you? But Bailey is capable of taking care of herself. Winston is reminded by her that she recently received a Catherine Fox Award for her work in reproductive health education. This must hurt even more because she earned it instead of him. Bailey discovers her two interns are still being ding-dongs about the whole situation shortly after surgery. She should be ashamed of herself for staring at this young man who is essentially them. Someone who is just beginning out in life is more like a checklist than a person. Could it be that her system is actually crashing and burning here? Furthermore, there are other issues than Quan and Lucas's circumstances. Even Simone finds it difficult to adapt and see the bigger picture. She also obsesses over finishing tasks quickly so she can cross them off her list, which leads to a serious error when it comes to a patient. She's helping Schmidt and Weber operate on Dante, an extremely attractive baker, to remove his gallbladder. She very nonchalantly asks Dante why he isn't taking HIV drugs since he tested positive for the virus, a condition Dante was unaware of. She is distracted by her need to, once again, cross things off a list. Dante's world spins even though the condition is treatable with the correct treatment. He once expressed a desire to leave the hospital and avoid dealing with his new reality as much as possible by refusing to have his gallbladder surgically removed. Schmidt is thankfully there to talk Dante down from the brink and to comfort him as he collapses over in agony, realizing that if he doesn't have the gallbladder surgery done right away, he will go septic and die. Dante succeeds in the end and might even get a date with Schmidt. I had no idea that I wanted a Surgeon Baker romance, but now that one is possible, I'm dying for one. Dante seems to be alright, but what about Simone? Simone's carelessness in speaking to a patient has left her overcome with guilt. She sends Lucas a message, asking him to find her in the on-call area. Simone just wants Lucas to cheer her up, but our sensitive prince wants to chat with her about what happened. Even though her time with Lucas didn't work out, she storms off when he starts to distance himself from her, and Dante is actually fairly understanding about it all. He can relate to being preoccupied. A few months ago, he had a few calls from the health department but he disregarded them since he didn't think he may be HIV positive. For Simone, it helps put a few things into perspective. Later, when Simone finds Lucas at home, she confesses that she tends to hide from reality out of fear. If she's finally coming to terms with reality this time, she needs to tell him straight out that she doesn't think it's a good idea for them to get romantically involved right now. She needs to concentrate on her profession because she is becoming distracted at work and she isn't sleeping. She must prioritize herself. Lucas, I guess, takes the news hard. Simone has always prioritized herself, especially when it comes to him, based on where he is sitting. He reminds her of the transition she made from kissing him to accepting someone else's proposal outright. She needed time apart from him to sort things out before she needed his comfort. He is furious, declaring their relationship officially finished. He says he doesn't want to see her again. That is it, they are housemates. Now that I am confronting my inner truth, I have to say that this is getting rather heated. 
Though there's no way that these two won't eventually find a way back to one another, it's good to see Lucas take a slight stand for himself. He allows people to trample all over him. Is there going to be a whole new Lucas Adams? For more, subscribe.